I was rolling down the street one afternoon when I encountered a curious child. He was staring at the wheelchair, and he was curious what was wrong with me. Yet, his mom wouldn't let him approach me. She was too embarrassed to come ask me a question. This happens to me a lot. It is a thing that I have to deal with each time that I go out. I am still amazed at the looks I get. They look at me like I am a strange being, like nobody has seen a wheelchair before. Then I wonder, will there ever be a time when I am seen as a normal person? Let me pause there and share with you another story. It was 1997, I was a senior at Hope College, and my friends and I went to the Grand Rapids Griffins game. As we were walking to our seats, we were stopped by a man. We didn't know this man, but he told us he had a brother that was not normal too. My friend looked at me, I looked at him, and then we began laughing. My friend asked the guy, well, are you normal? <laughs> the guy looked at us funny, and then he walked away. What defines something as normal? The first thing I want to do is to define what normal is. The Webster Dictionary defines it as conforming to a type standard or regular pattern. Something that occurs naturally. Something that is without physical or mental disorder. Society has defined normal as something without a struggle. Something that is cool. And everything outside of this definition is not normal, weird, or uncool. We are bombarded with this idea every day. The media tells you. If you have a flaw, you can fix it. If you look different, we will give you a makeover. But don't be satisfied with the person that you are. Do something about it, so you will be able to fit in. There is an idea normal is something that is cool. It is something that gives us status. We long to be in the group that sets the trends. We desire to be highly regarded. So some of us sacrifice what we believe. Because we don't want to be an outcast of the society. Listen to this paragraph in the book Blue Like Jazz. Donald Miller writes, I think we have this need to be cool. That there is some undercurrent in society that says some people are cool, some people are not, and it is very, very important that we are cool. So, when we find somebody who is cool on television or the radio, we associate ourselves with this person to feel valid ourselves. And the problem I have with this is that we rarely know what the person believes who we are associating ourselves with. In other words, who cares about what I believe about life, I only care about if I am cool. Miller hits it right on the button. We care about our stature in society so much, we lose sight of what we believe in. Our beliefs become secondary to us, and soon we really don't know what we believe. We begin to build up walls to hide all of our flaws. Soon, we are walking masks conforming to the culture around us. I was born in 1973. The umbilical cord was coming out before me. So they had to do an emergency C-section. They knew they were racing the clock. 45 minutes later, I was born. I wasn't breathing and my body was blue. They started CPR and gave me CPR for 40 minutes. I was breathing finally but I had gone without oxygen for more than an hour. The lack of oxygen caused an injury to the motor portion of my brain. I have cerebral palsy. I am classified as an athetoid. 
which means my muscles never stop moving. You can say I don't fit into the category of normal. Do you understand how frustrating it is not to be able to express yourself? Do you understand how frustrating it is when your parents or brothers and sisters can't understand you? For the first six years of my life, I couldn't express myself. I couldn't tell my mother what was wrong with me, or let her know how I loved her. I was stuck because nobody could really understand me. And now everybody wondered what my mental capability was. These were questions nobody could answer. Because while some believed I expressed myself enough, other experts couldn't tell. As I grew up, I started using a picture book to communicate with my family. It solved some of the frustration, but it was slow, and I still couldn't communicate everything that I wanted to say. Judy, my speech therapist, wondered if I might be able to speak using a communication box, so I was given my first one when I was six. We took it home and Mom let me try it. I used my left big toe to operate it, and by the next day I was talking in complete sentences. This technology changed the course of my life. All of a sudden, my family could see I was able to communicate. Augmentative communication gives a person like myself a chance to be educated. It gives a person a chance to build relationships. It gives a person a chance to have a meaningful life because it gives them a tool to communicate. Number sign. Number sign as a person living with a disability, you are always going to have an uphill battle. This is true for all disabilities, and it gets even more difficult when you have a communication disorder on top of the disability. When you have a disability, but have your communication, you can navigate your way through the system and almost become anything you want to be. It isn't easy, but it is possible. When you have a disability and you aren't able to communicate, it's almost impossible to become something you want to become. It's almost impossible to accomplish something you want to accomplish because most people walk right by you. You can't communicate, so you have nothing to offer. Why should we get to know you? Why should we give you a chance? My life is a prime example of that fact. We always had to fight the system so I could be in the regular classroom. Even when they agreed I should be mainstreamed, my home school district decided it would be easier to bus me 30 minutes away. They decided it would be easier to do that than to try to make the accommodations that I needed to be successful. Yet, I persevered. I excelled through grade school and high school. However, excelling through high school didn't help me get accepted. I wore all the cool clothes. I had the newest Jordans, and still I had a difficult time making friends in school. I tried to mask my disability, however it's the only thing my peers saw. There comes a time where everybody has to make this decision in their life. I had to decide if I was going to keep trying to mask the disability, or decide to embrace my disability. When I went to Hope College, I decided to quit acting, and I showed people who Chris Klein was. I began to be accepted for the person I was, and the disability disappeared. It disappeared because I quit trying to be something I was not, and people saw a guy in a wheelchair who liked video games, who liked sports, who liked to joke around. They wanted to get to know me. 
For the first time in my life, my friends looked past the disability and saw a person. They were able to see my unique gifts. I'm not asking for a handout, and I don't expect to be handed anything. I have proved myself over and over, and I will continue to do so for the rest of my life. I know that gets old at times, but I know we all have to prove our worth. It's just that some of us have to work harder to prove ourselves. I feel the disability community needs more people like myself. Actually, I think society needs more people like myself. I feel too many people believe society owes them something. Everybody is looking for somebody to bail them out, but nobody wants to work for it. At the same time, I wish people could see past the disability. In order for me to prove myself, you have to look past my disability. You have to give me the opportunities and allow me to show you who I am. You have to see I have unique gifts, just like everybody here. Are you able to see them? Are you able to see others' unique gifts? My disability is able to be seen, but what is your disability? We all have a disability here. Most of us in this room can hide their struggle, but that disability is constraining you in some way. When we mask our own constraints, it's harder to see past the disabilities of other people because we feel inadequate ourselves. It's time for us to stop pretending that we have it all together so that we can share our struggles together. When we do this, it's easier for everybody to see past the disability and able to see the gifts a person has to offer to the community. I believe everybody has the right to be involved in the community, and I know that can be difficult for some to do. People that have a communication disability have a really difficult time forming relationships because they have a difficult time getting into a conversation with anyone. This is where an augmentative communication system can make a huge difference in a person's life. Yet, we need to educate people about what augmentative communication is. Typically, when someone meets a person that uses augmentative communication, he or she doesn't know how to interact with them. When this happens, the person says hi and walks away. He or she assumes the person couldn't understand them. People need to understand that people that use AAC are well educated. We want to talk to you. We want to build a relationship with you. This is why I am starting an organization called Become AAC. Become AAC stands for building connections with others through mentoring and education about AAC. Become AAC is committed to assisting persons with speech disabilities to live in fulfilling ways. We believe that the cornerstone to a full life is derived from the ability to participate in meaningful relationships with others and engage in everyday social interactions as a fully ratified participant. In order to address this primary objective, become AAC is focused on providing tools and services to people who use AAC in order to enable and enhance communication leading to social integration and community building. Unfortunately, many won't be given the chance because people always see the disability first. It's time to do good. It's time to take our masks off. It's time to realize everybody has disabilities. Most importantly, it's time to see everybody's unique gifts. 
Thank you. Back here for a second. Awesome. You are amazing. So, I want to introduce you to Chris's wife, Dawn. They just celebrated their four-month anniversary yesterday. Thank you, Chris. You are amazing.